Hi, Instagram. Maha here. And this week I have been coming on over the last few days to talk about my story as a Palestinian, Muslim, Lebanese, Christian woman raised in Australia, piecing together the fragments of my Palestinian culture, coming to Australia as a two-year-old with my father in 1964. And I have been telling the story of what that feels like to be disconnected from the mother, the motherland, the mother tongue, the mother within, the mother without, all of those things. And as many people know, I have been the founder of Embody Birth for the last nearly 30 years. And I share the wisdom of birth from the wisdom of my roots that lives in my body, just as the wisdom of birth lives in your body as a woman. And today I thought I might share with you the first story in my award-winning book on belly dance for birth, the dance of the womb. Many people haven't read the book, some people have, and I think one of the wonderful ways that we as women can unite in humanity is through storytelling, which for me is the heart space. Storytelling is the authentic, real emotions, not just the facts and figures that we see on social media, especially at this time around the Palestinian story. We need to balance it up with the feminine aspect of the heart, the nurturing, the nourishment, the medicine, which is what I've always tried to in capture in my work and in who I am as a woman and my voice in the world because, as I said, this is what will gather us in a place of oneness and unity with one another. And I had a beautiful grandmother on my father's side, my Palestinian side. Her name was Amina, and I called my daughter, who is now 15, born at home when I was 46, Amina. And my grandmother, Amina, has always lived her soul, her heart lives in my body. I've always had this affinity and connection to her, even though I don't have any recollection of meeting her, although I did as a baby. Apparently she looked after me when I was kidnapped by my dad from my mum as six month old baby and lived in Jordan for a year and a half with my Palestinian grandmother, Amina, and the family who had become refugees from Palestine in 1948 to Jordan and she's always resonated with me and I feel that I carry her strength and her tenacity and everything that she exuded in relation to the matriarch and I've always connected to that and that's why I dedicated this first chapter if anyone's just come on my book Dance of the Womb my award-winning world first book on belly dance for birth. So Amina, my grandmother, and the domes, a dedication. Amina, my grandmother, was Palestinian, six foot tall, a self-assured woman who possessed, possessed magnificent, capable hands and an unwavering strength of spirit that inspired the hearts of all of those around her. She lived with her husband, my sweet, handsome grandfather, in a small village in Lida, Aramle, Palestine. He helped construct the railway line and she baked flatbread in a large indoor oven, stone oven, that had been built into the rustic family kitchen. Amina kept a fertile family garden that boasted a fine array of plants and herbs, parsley, mint, oregano, spring onions, garlic and peppers, all grew in wild abundance. A generous date tree dripping with fruits stood solid behind a stone wall. And three times a week, a vendor rode into the neighborhood on a donkey carrying two crates laden with a variety of fruit and vegetables. He would cry out in a shrill voice, Fada wakuda, Fada wakuda, fruits and vegetables and the village women would come out from their houses to choose the day's groceries. 
a serve yourself mini market set on the streets, a place to meet, a place to laugh, a place for women's business, an all embracing environment enriched with the simple self-sustaining pulse of life. Amina had nine children, five girls and four boys. She breastfed each one of her children for a period of two years. My father was her sixth baby. When she reached full term in her pregnancies, my grandfather would take Amina and her children on a horse and cart to her in-law's family house. The jigging up and down over stones and rough ground would help bring her labour on. And this house was situated in a place called the Domes in the village of Al-Kubab between the towns of Ramleh and Jerusalem, Palestine. This house had witnessed many generations of births and within the walls was held the wisdom and secrets of all women's birth. All the experiences gone by. It was here that Amina entered my great grandfather's family house to dance the rhythm of her birth with the assistance of a midwife while the rest of the family watched in anticipation for her new arrival. After the birth, of her baby, all its siblings would gather around Amina, the central focus of their love, and admire their new arrival. Her husband would then take the whole family back to their village on his horse and cart, where Amina would rest for 40 days and nights, as is traditional in Middle Eastern culture. Her children would be cared for unconditionally by other family members, as well as by Amina's eldest daughters. She would be supported in the knowledge that her family were being looked after, which meant she could recover, be fed, cared for, and bond with her newborn in comfort, worry-free. The inner family circle of life, protecting and nurturing each of its members. I love that story of our family birthing house where Amina gave birth to her babies which now exists and lives and pulses to the rhythm of my heartbeat. I carry that in my work and embody birth. This is the type of education, educare we need in birth for all mothers, all mothers and babies. This is how we birth through the channels of love. Some birthing traditions a traditional Palestinian custom for babies born with their birthing membranes intact, the call, meaning the bag was not broken, was for the mother to hang the membranes in a sunny place to dry and then sew a small leather triangular pouch to put them in. She would give this to her favourite person to bring them good fortune. My father's eldest sister gave him such a pouch to wear around his neck as a young man and he was greatly honoured by this gift. The afterbirth or placenta would then be buried under the first step at the entrance of the family house. Anybody walking over it would be touched by the purity and graciousness that is life. A renowned Egyptian wise woman, mistress of ceremonies, resided in Amina's village. She represented a traditional ritual family, female leader and was responsible for performing a special ceremony with a newborn, which originated from the time of the pharaohs called El Sabuch, meaning the seventh. As the name implies, this particular ritual was enacted on the seventh day of a baby's life, the numerical value of seven carrying cosmological symbolism as a rite de passage initiation for the baby from the womb to the world. The belief is that after our birth, we cross a threshold from having a neutral gender and status to a specific reference within the family hierarchy. This is a key component of the ceremony that gives us a sense of belonging. And I have another chapter in the book called The Last Dance that I go into more detail about this ceremony and about what this means. The mistress would take a large round chafe sieve, mankal it was called, used during the wheat harvest 
and she carefully placed the baby in it. All of the guests and children would gather around with candles and peas and nuts and sweets as the old woman, the mistress, would bounce the baby up and down, chanting a poetic verse, sometimes with a cheeky sense of humour and at other times a more serious tone. The symbolic tool used to separate the wheat from the chaff, now a metaphor for family life, separating from mother, connecting to this new family, a sense again of belonging, to give the baby sound life advice with gestures of fun and play or deeper messages relayed about significant family members, qualities that the baby could aspire to or reject. You must listen to your mother. You must listen to your father. Don't listen to your uncle. Don't listen to your auntie. Do listen to this auntie. Follow your cousin, for she or he is wise. Lord, O oh Lord, make him or her grow up and be like us. How I wish that I could have met my grandmother Amina and spoken to her of this beautiful Palestinian village and this ceremony and her birth experience and the family tradition to initiate a newborn, a child into its family of origin with pride and love supporting its members with such unity and care. If only we could truly cradle our birthing mothers today in this divinity, how different may many or some of our mothering experiences be. To feel a genuine connection for all who came before us and who would come after us, that magical thread of life so deeply interwoven within our human spiritual understanding and experience. My feeling of gratitude is endless as I share with you all a part of recreating the symbol of the domes through the inspiration of Middle Eastern dance, a fertile life force of my ancient culture. The Dance of the Womb my award-winning book and this is the dance that all mothers will dance in birth to bring us into connecting that unity that I've been speaking about all week and you know the Palestinian culture and the Middle Eastern culture is a very poetic and philosophical culture it's a very deep and ancient culture and our roots are like the olive tree roots that live in the ground of our homeland, our ancestry, our roots and our roots <laughs> are all connected. And so that separation and severance that I've been through has brought the imprint into my work of raising and evolving human consciousness so that we all realize we are all one race. We all come from the human race. And embodied birth wants us to know that. As I've said many times this week, my child is your child. Your child is my child. So women understand that. And if we could only sit at the round table with our hearts open, to find peace through freedom, freeing up everybody to be able to walk the earth freely and to be able to be in their culture, in their roots and be a part of this human race where we are all one. We are all one. So that's what I wanted to share today the first chapter of my book, Dance of the Womb. And this week I might come on and share some more of my book. It's been a while since I've read chapters of my book. So look out for my lives this week and uh, you can always watch the replay as well if you missed the first bit. And as always, sending love to everybody. Always happy to receive your messages. I've had so many messages this week, so many shares of my original uh, video that I made a few days ago of my Palestinian father's story 
And uh, I think that's the way we go as women. That is our medicine, is in the storytelling, the opening of the heart. So thank you, Grandmother Birthkeeper. Love to you too, darling. Miss you. <laughs> Yeah, so get in touch, any collaboration, any interviews, anything that you feel that my voice will amplify in your work. This is time for unity for all women. There's no more separation. We have to come together. And that's how our voices become stronger. No more competition, no more segregation, no more hierarchy. We must network and bring our voices together yeah so sending lots of love have a beautiful day and mama stay love you all thank you